So hello everybody. Nice to have you here. Why well, we have strong competition up there, uh, but I hope uh, you will see uh, Susan's point of view on the open stack and how we deal with uh, deployment of uh, open stack. Um, as you know, we're an enterprise um, company, so we are focused on on production environment. So uh, even if you root the stack, as the colleague said now. Um, I will not do the stack with my presentation, but I will try in, in my setup installing SUSE OpenStack Cloud within this half an hour. Um, and while I install the stuff in the background, I have different phases where I will tell you a bit about OpenStack, our mission. Um, another step is where I explain a bit uh, how we deal with control and compute nodes, how we realize high availability to um, serve you. Uh, stable and reliable platform for um, even production uh, applications. Uh, further, I will also show you that how we configure um, the, the OpenStack services in a very easy way. To give you a short overview of what I'm going to do, how the setup is uh, done, uh, and since the OpenStack Cloud, uh, we have a minimum requirement of nodes, um, at least when you initial set up the infrastructure. So we're providing an administration server that is providing um, a, a tool which is called Crowbar, comparable to this triple O as we heard before, as an example of a tool or yeah, all these kind of tools that you can deploy. Uh, the approach here is a bit that we discover nodes in the network environment and then we allocate these nodes. Uh, and put roles on these nodes. Uh, as you see, we have here a control node that is hosting the open stack services, and then we have a compute and storage nodes. Uh, in my simple setup, uh, I have one of each, and uh, yeah, a KVM uh, compute node at the moment, but you will see we have other opportunities as well. The chef is our configuration management at the moment, uh, comparable with the salt stack, right? Um, so this is using cookbook, uh, how to install and, and, and configure the programs, um, like services, databases, um, NTP, HA, all that stuff. Um, we are using a PXD environment with TFTP deployment, we can say uh, we are providing um, our repositories, either with a local resource or our custom center, all that stuff in the circuit is uh, based on the administration server. So, in the, the first phase that I will do now is deploying this administration node. Um, and I will start now because it will take some minutes. Uh, I have a colleague which helps me with the timing. So, I, I will initiate uh, and trigger the installation and I will explain to them uh, how the stuff works on that. So, I will interrupt and show you how our uh, tool looks like. <clears throat> Give it a browser. This is our um, Chrome or dashboard, and from here we can do installation. We can, we can do an upgrade from a former version, or we can install from scratch. So we're choosing installation from scratch, and I will tell you what it does. So now we can start the timing, <coughs> and I jump back. Um, I will show you on the command line what it's doing. So actually, it does all the steps that are showing up here. It's um, 
doing initial jobs, um, providing all the open stack services, it's providing the underlying operating system. Um, since it's integrated, um, it's providing some crowbar settings and then also the, the proper uh, tools then to use. It's providing chef clients that is required on, uh, on, on, this, on the, each client then, so the chef server will be there. Um, and you also can check the, the work and all the log files then. So you have always an overview where the installation it is. If you have a problem, you can always get the debug information as well then um, to see what's going on in the installation. So we let it run now. It will take just a couple of minutes um, and I continue with my presentation. <clears throat> so we go back to the first step. So Good, what is our vision then? Um, as you know, I mean, OpenStack is a very feature-rich tool, right? We have a big community that is providing a lot of nice tools. The code is uh, available for everyone. Um, but when you go into it and want to install it, it can get a bit uh, complicated. Um, how many of you have uh, installed Vanilla OpenStack? Someone did already? How did you install? Did you just use tools, commercial tools, or? Uh -huh. But it's close by one, I think it's back in the right. Yeah, exactly. So, of course, if you try that one, then you have also a quite good tool. It works a bit different than our approach, but yeah, that's one of these things. Um, and that's the, the point from an enterprise um, class perspective that we want to provide you um, possibility to get a proper and um, reliable platform um, where you can not run only a DevOps uh, application, but also um, production uh, workloads on it, um, mission critical workloads on it. Um, the other thing is when you go vanilla, um, open stack, and open source Linux, then uh, you have to find support when you work in the enterprise environment, right? Uh, that's something that is provided in, in the enterprise solution. So SUSE is providing SUSE Linux Enterprise as the default operating system, and on top you are getting um, the OpenStack solution with high availability extension, all packed in, in one solution. So you have um, good value. So you get a, a very pre-built solution where you only that have to focus on your um, actual workloads that you want to run. So you don't have to spend a bunch of effort and knowledge and preparation work in getting the OpenStack installation done, right? And in the former times we have proved that we can do that also quite fast. We saw today quite nice solutions uh, which were really fast, um, but they maybe have a bit of different approach in terms of maybe, um, let's say, um, compatible with different hardware vendors because you need an underlying operating system that's reliable. Uh, for the hardware, you have to be certified for certain uh, enterprise class applications. So it's maybe a different approach than we do. Um, but yeah, so we, we provided this platform and we do it fast, but fast that it works for enterprises. And that is proven by different um, OpenStack summits. Who has been on any OpenStack summits here? Someone has in Paris? No? Atlanta, Vancouver, no one? Um, so these guys, uh, they have ruled the stack and they have done this stuff in quite short time, you can say. So in the beginning, when the open stack showed up in 2012, then uh, it took just a couple of minutes and if using heat, then they would have done a, a minus factor with some bonus points. So they have done fast deployment here as well um, in um, Atlanta when they did a high availability installation where they really plugged cables um, and the stuff still worked. Uh, services did proper failover and so on. And the, the last time it was through the stack in Vancouver, there was even two teams uh, from SUSE winning 
that competition. I don't know why they don't do it anymore, probably because now there's close in seconds. Um, so probably they skip this kind of competition. But at that time we were quite fast. So now I have to do a start because um, the base installation I heard is uh, done. So now we can uh, actually go in our web browser. So I go out from our presentation mode. So now our Crowbar is properly prepared. Um, I will just uh, start two virtual instances. One of them will be a control node and the other one will be a compute node. So the control node is hosting the open stack services, the compute node is the one where you can put your um, virtual on. And then after a couple of minutes, they will show up uh, in this dashboard. So getting back to the presentation, we talked about the open stack. Um, so how do we get there? Um, that's what we're doing right now. Um, you have the two opportunities uh, to install the OpenStack from SUSE. One is that they do uh, the stuff more or less manually by downloading the operating system, put our uh, OpenStack cloud on top of it, and then configure certain stuff. The things that takes most time is getting repositories down that you can uh, provide, for example, via subscription management tool or SUSE manager. Um, and then you have to also to configure uh, your network setup. Uh, what I do on my installation here, so I actually didn't prepare much. I used actually uh, the admin appliance that you can download yourself on SUSEstudio.com. Currently we have version 5 there, um, which is uh, the Kilo version. The Liberty version is on my machine, so it's Cloud 6. So it's almost like Cloud 6. And when you have downloaded it, the only thing you have to do, you create a virtual instance, for example, if you want to try calling. Um, then you do some user acceptance, and you have to take care of the network JSON setup. I just use the default because it's just a virtual environment. But that's the way how you very easily get uh, up and running. Then my next step was when uh, um, Martin press the timer that I start to install the crowbar and the next step will be then uh, to deploy the services on these nodes. So when, when the nodes are done, then we can uh, do that. The network JSON file is very important because you know, who knows network JSON? Nothing? Okay, you do it in a different way. So that is the definition of your network setup. There are different modes depending on how many network parts you have in and uh, how much load will go through your network, right? You have single mode or teaming mode, so single teaming is more or less the same. It's either to have the administration network uh, untagged separately or um, teaming is a bonding then where you can also run uh, all over all network parts and then run other network and your instance network on, on the same bond. Dual is to your admin network separate from the um, normal operation network. Um, then you have to also understand the mapping of your physical network devices and of course the IP ranges you have to adapt to your uh, setup. There are good documentations from our uh, deployment guide where you can read how to do these things in, in more detail. Good, let's get back to uh, um, our demo. Let's see, so here are now our two nodes. And now I want to deploy the services. So I want to tell one of the nodes should be uh, the node taking care of uh, the open stack services and the other one should be uh, the one to, where I can uh, use for uh, normal KVM workloads or I can have native Docker workloads, whatever you want to have it for. Um, so I go into the nodes and I have a bulk edition and here I can allocate them um, all at one. Place. So I give this guys a name here. Let's see. I will. I have to make it a bit smaller that I get all the fields in here. So I have my administration node, and then you can check on your MAC address what node it is. So this is, for example, my control node, and this is the compute uh, node. So I will give them some names, and I put them in groups so we have a little better control of them, what they do and what they are for. So this is my admin node, this is my control node, I can 
So I have a couple of names, you can also be a lesson. Uh, the nice thing that uh, the studio 
your home appliance creator, let's say, uh, which is free available for you. Uh, you can build uh, your own images very easy. It's a, a graphical wizard, it's a browser wizard. Uh, and then you can, via a webhook, uh, automatically download these images into your uh, glance repository. It's a very nice uh, function. Then we have the identity keystone uh, up here. Here also you can, for example, uh, connect to an LDAP uh, service if you have that in the environment. Uh, of course, the dashboard is there, which we hope to get in, in a couple of minutes. Then you have Nova API scheduler and the uh, Rabbit MQ as message queuing protocol. Uh, the compute nodes, uh, this is where your, own, um, your workloads get processed. Um, so here it's important, of course, to have proper CPU and RAM on your machines, uh, primarily running normal services. Um, for Docker, we have the Nova Docker uh, drivers up there. Uh, and here you can do all stuff uh, with your VMs and these compute nodes. You can even do a uh, live migration of VMs if required, for example. Um, I mentioned um, high availability, or he talked about business continuity. Is that required in enterprises? If you see that picture, you don't want to be in an admin position or an IT management position here. Yeah. 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 It's even vicious. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, what are you doing in such a situation? I mean, OpenStack is nice, but it's not natively maybe providing you the tools to have in such enterprise and environment as you would require for mission critical applications, right? Um, and SUSE has also supported uh, the HA project for many, many years. And the good thing for us was that OpenStack requires high availability, so what we did, we just took our product and uh, integrated it in the, in the OpenStack solution. So now uh, you can really build um, a high available platform for your services. Uh, so you're setting up very, uh, very easy, setting up, for example, three uh, control nodes uh, with the pace, underlying pacemaker. And the nice thing is it's just uh, a marker, you will see what it is. Who knows what a marker is? Okay, it's probably our own definition. So it's just one bar term where you define what has to be done to set up the all, all services in the cluster. Uh, so that's on the one side. And on the other side, what is new? Um, we have also integrated uh, a new functionality is called Pacemaker Remote. So you can even um, keep your um, your your compute nodes hosts um, high available. So as soon as you see, okay, one of these nodes is going out, you can do uh, migration and get uh, your instances up and running. So this works not, now not only for um, cloud-aware applications, but you also can use this uh, for legacy applications. So you get a, a much wider range of use cases for the OpenStack suddenly. Um, Another good thing is also you can, uh, um, with this HA solution, especially on, on the infrastructure side, you can very easily maintain your environment. So you can deal the planned downtime. So you just take out one of the nodes, upgrade it, and then bring it back in the cluster. Uh, and for the uncloud downtime, of course, you then have the pacemaker functionality integrated. Uh, and if you are even after resource recovery, so we, we have also a tool coming with uh, the HA extension, with, which is uh, called Relax and Recover. Someone knows that? That's also an integrated tool, so you make an image that you can very easily bring back in one of the nodes and you have a very little downtime, so to speak. Uh, another benefit that I mentioned before um, was that we have different kind of hypervisors and that's probably also quite interesting when you look on the investment perspective. So we have normally, uh, uh, I would say, 80% uh, maybe in the, in, the, in the country that using VMware maybe as an underlying virtual uh, environment. Uh, others might use a lot of Microsoft and Hyper-V environments. So we thought we don't want to lock it in in uh, now ordering a new architecture and a new platform 
where everybody has to learn Linux and everybody has to use the KVM as client device, right? So we keep it open. We, you can keep your resources and your knowledge, and via the APIs you get um, the possibility to integrate existing solutions and, and use these solutions then uh, for for this central management and for your workloads that are based in the cloud. Then. So you, you, for example, can skip uh, much more this VM scroll uh, using pure hard devices, uh, and you get a better overview with, with the um, self. Uh, service uh, interface here that OpenStack provides. So, and the other thing is also, I mean, if you of course need a certain hypervisor, if you need certain applications that has to be run on, uh, on, on Hyper-V, yeah, that, let it run there because the investment is probably good for that. Uh, but then, yeah, you don't struggle because you can very easily integrate it here uh, into the cloud environment anyhow. And that's the main purpose for us. Um, everybody is owning OpenStack code. There are a lot of contributors. I mean, more than 500 companies, I think, nowadays. Over 30,000 people contributing to that. We are part of that as well. Um, and as I said, we, we don't want to lock in you to take certain products or, or buy a whole product range from SUSE just to get proper things done. Uh, we keep it open that you can work with partners. Um, here are some on the, on the screen that we work on. Uh, so different areas, like uh, if you want to have platform as a service, we work uh, with Cloud Foundry and integrate that. Then you get a, a proper platform uh, to do your work on. Um, we integrate it with hardware vendors, of course, because that's important in the enterprise that software so is less. Uh, is properly working with the features, um, for example, Rust features that hardware vendors are providing. Uh, we want to give you an option of your own, which storage you want to use, same as networking. And then there are tools uh, like uh, Cloud Cruiser for building systems, or Hedera, very easy interfaces to manage your instance, uh, your, your users, your in instances, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also pointed here three of SUSE products. So we have SUSE Studio, as I mentioned, that's uh, for building images that you can then redeploy in your environment. We have SUSE Manager for um, lifecycle management, so you can easily uh, patch your system in your environment. You can patch your infrastructure. Um, it's very useful. It's nowadays also using configuration management uh, with Salt Stack. And uh, last but not least, we also have a storage product, uh, Ceph-based, which is uh, SUSE Open. Uh, SUSE, no, sorry, that's SUSE Open Stack Cloud. Yeah, that should be SUSE Enterprise Storage. So that's uh, how we work and how we want to provide you um, an open stock stack solution. So let's see. Um, we jump back to our setup. And we can see the guys are ready deployed. So if you can, we can go in in one of the nodes and then we can see some descriptions and we can also see they have some power plants and roles deployed. So these are the, the services that are running here and that are required for uh, yeah, providing the infrastructure. Um, now we want to go in and if you know all that you have normally to configure like 7,000 parameters in OpenStack, if you do vanilla, then uh, we bring you another, a bit easier way how to configure all these um, parameters. Um, and therefore we are, have so-called bar attempts, which are recipes how to set up the different um, OpenStack services. And I could now, now go through each of them uh, and configure and, and show you how they are set up. But uh, what I will do is um, I, I have prepared something that makes it automatically, so I don't have to do the timing. The difference is just a couple of minutes, so it's going a bit faster. Mm -hmm. And so I will just uh, start it. So we. Hopefully, can make this stuff in time. So I just 
um, copy a file which is a, 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 a batch file. No one. Okay. Okay. Okay, we can. So I show you at least the, the file that we have here. Um, that I can copy. <laughs> Good. This is a um, YAML file which has um, all the configuration for my OpenStack services included because this is a, a ProBar function. You have a ProBar export, so if I install the whole setup, then I can reuse my setup for deploying it on another machine or yeah, very easy redeploy this kind of settings and I can even modify the settings, of course. And uh, when I have it installed, <coughs> then I will now import it into uh, the current setup and then it will run and do the job. Uh, automatically, you can see how it looks like. Um, let's see here. Okay. So it's called core and batch build and then uh, it should be that file. Okay. Something is has gone wrong. Okay. okay. So this is at least how it looks like. Um, we can we have not so much time anyhow. So um, it looks after the, the clients probably because I had a typo error. So it's looking for admin node, control node, and compute node, and then it's deploying all the different uh, R clients. Okay, and then it will deploy the stuff on on the um, control node. So I can show you the ones that I wanted to show you. Um, one of them maybe take Nova for example. So we go to the open stack part class, we go to Nova. And uh -huh, yeah, we have it wants it's want us to do it in the right order. So we create a database stuff. So as you see, you are already know you can't do it. Um, here is setting the parameters. If you are not happy with parameters or want to add stuff, you can always get the raw code. Then you can configure it manually. Um, and the nice thing is you can then use the nodes that are available and just drag and drop for keeping the service. The nice thing is if you have um, a cluster, then you just drag, for example, a cluster here and, and put it there. And then it will tell you, okay, or that you will have three nodes in the back end uh, taking care of that service. And that's the only thing you have to do for HA then. Uh, and then you have the whole interface where you easily can maintain uh, your interfaces. Um, so if, if you would have done everything properly, I will show you the last step. Then we are done. Good, let's see here. Then you, when you have everything deployed, uh, then you can go into the dashboard uh, 
and then this is where you want to add, add up. So now when all the bar attempts are deployed, you have your um, Horizon dashboard, and then you can log in, and then I guess this kind of picture everybody has seen. So that's where you want to end up, right? Good. So that was all from our side. I mean, I hope you got a bit of insight. Feel free to test the stuff from our web page. And uh, if you have questions, we have to hurry on. Uh, we are available up there, and you can we can discuss your use cases there. Thank you very much for your time and your attention.